Good morning, this is Pamela, and you're listening to Watchmen on the Pod. I'm going to continue with a new book reading today. It's an overcomer book by Jesse Penn Lewis that is entitled Dying to Live, God's Master Plan of Salvation. And we are in Chapter 1, The Way of Deliverance. Know ye not that so many of us, as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Romans chapter 6, verse 3. How to get free from the bondage of sin and self is the great question in many hearts. Such a freedom looks impossible, but the things that are impossible with man are possible with God. The word of God says, one died for all, therefore all died. And he died for all, that they which live shall no longer live unto themselves, but unto him. Second Corinthians chapter five, fourteen through fifteen. When we first came to Christ with the guilt and burden of our sins, deliverance looked just as impossible. But as we looked, as we took God at his word, the Holy Spirit bore witness and proved to us that he could do what seemed the impossible thing. Let us go back to that first stage of deliverance and see how it was done. One, we were convicted of sin. Two, we struggled to get peace and looked inward for relief, but all in vain. Three, at the point of despair, we were shown that deliverance had to come from some power outside of ourselves. Four, at last, we looked away to Christ and saw him on Calvary's cross, bearing our sins in his own body on the tree. Five, we ceased from struggling and resting on his finished work of atonement, found peace through the blood of his cross. The Holy Spirit applied the power of the blood, and we had no more consciousness of sins. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 2. The impossible thing was done. Justified by faith, we knew we were at peace with God. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. New life from God was imparted to us by the Holy Spirit, and he bore witness with our spirit that we were children of God. Romans chapter 8, verse 16. How clearly these steps are repeated in another stage, as God leads us on to no deliverance from the bondage of self and sin. 1. The Spirit of God first convicts us of the bondage of sin and the loathsomeness of the selfhood. See, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 1 through 3. And I'm just going to go ahead and go to the Bible and read that. I think that would be a very good thing to keep it all together. Let's see, that was 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. It takes a minute. I will be reading out of the King James. And it says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk, not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet not are ye able. For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envy and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men." So that was the selfhood that we needed to be delivered from. Okay, number two. We struggle to conquer our sins and deliver ourselves. We cry to God, and yet victory appears more and more hopeless. The enemy taunts us. It is not for you, or there is no such thing as deliverance. We seek to surrender more fully to God, but fall again and again. We long to do God's will, but the more we try the more we seem to do the things contrary to our desires. The loathsomeness of sin increases, and its power seems greater. 
and we are put into circumstances that bring out the very worst part of us until at last we loathe ourselves and cry, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me? Romans chapter 7, verse 24. Number three, at this point of bitter despair and darkness, the Spirit of God shows us that deliverance must come from another source and that self cannot conquer self or sin. Number four, the Spirit of God then leads us again to Calvary and throws light upon the meaning of the death of the Lord for the deliverance of all who trust in him. He leads to the written word, one died for all, therefore all died. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 14. And we see that the Savior carried the sinner to the cross as well as his sins, and that we, should, we have died in him to sin and to the old life of self. When we then, when, no, I'm sorry, we then consent to account ourselves crucified with Christ and agree to live the crucified life, always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake that the life also of Jesus may be manifested. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 11. Number 5. Planted together in the likeness of his death. Romans chapter 6, verse 5. As having died with him, we cease from our own work, efforts, and enter into his rest. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 10 saying in dependence upon the Holy Spirit, I have been crucified with Christ. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Number 6, the life of God is now imparted in fuller measure, and the Holy Spirit reveals the living Christ, indwelling the soul, henceforth enabling the believer moment by moment to live unto him. But I do not yet feel all this, someone says. Nevertheless, this is the message of Calvary and the resurrection of the Christ. And we must come to the right position in the sight of God by faith in his word, ere we can prove it in experience. Have we been brought by the Holy Spirit to utter despair of ourselves? And are we now ready to own that in us dwells no good thing? Then let us now know, no, let us know in simple trust. One, look to Calvary once again and see that the Savior did carry us in himself to his cross as well as our sins. Romans chapter 6 verse 3, Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. So let's go to Romans chapter 6. Verse 3, and it says, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? And then Galatians chapter 2, let's go to that, verse 20. And it says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet, not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. All right. Number two, take our place in him on the cross and say that by the choice of our will, we have died with him. Go to Colossians 3.3. 3. Let's get there. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. And then go, let's see, I already read that one. Yes, okay. Now, number three. Then day by day, as any trace of the old nature life is revealed, yield it to the cross and reckon it crucified with him. That is Romans chapter 8. Let's go to that. Verse 13. 
For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye live through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Number four, count upon the living Christ in us to manifest his life continually. If we quietly thus rest upon the word of God, ye died, Colossians 3.3, 3, and claim the severing power of the death of Christ over every unveiling of the old Adam life or old bonds of sin, the Holy Spirit will at once make to die the doings of the body, and we will walk in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. Moreover, in the hour of temptation, when Satan tries to throw back upon us old sins or workings of the old life in any form, we must, by the word of our testimony, that we are Christ, that we are crucified with Christ, claim the victory of Christ. Let's see, no. That we are crucified with Christ, claim the victory Christ won over Satan on the cross, and refuse to yield to his power. But can over can our death with Christ be made real to us in one moment? We can take our place as crucified with Christ in a moment of time, but the Spirit of God must deal with the old life day by day, and we then surrender it to the cross as it is revealed. Can self rise again? 1. After we have seen our death with Christ, there probably will arise afresh manifestations of self to be dealt with. For as the work of God deepens in us, the Holy Spirit will reveal depths we had no conception of. If we cry, let him not spare. Number two, sometimes the adversary may in imitate self to make us lose our faith that we are crucified with Christ. What are we to do when this happens? One, stand upon the word of the living God and say it is written i have been crucified with christ his death is mine number two hand over every trace of self real or apparent to the holy spirit for him to deal with and refuse to have anything to do with it number three believe that god does deliver now in the face of all appearances to the contrary and hide in christ on the cross from the enemy counting upon the shelter of the blood of Calvary. Does fellowship with the death of Christ mean no feeling? The Lord has not promised to turn us into stones. In union with Christ in his death, we are delivered from selfishness, from self-sensitiveness, i.e. being wounded for self, but not from sensitiveness for others. Now, there will be tears for others, but none because we are hurt. However much we suffer, we do not resent it and retort as we used to, but we do feel the pain and see the hand of God in all that comes to us for our good. And that is Romans chapter 8, verse 28. If we have died, how can we be tempted? If Christ suffered being tempted and was tempted in all points like we are, we shall not cease to be tempted. Galatians 2.20 gives the secret. I crucified. Christ lives in me. I, the selfish, I kneel to his cross. Me and personal me remains to be tempted and tried. What about dying daily? If we look at the context of the passage where this phrase occurs, 1 Corinthians 15.31. Let's go to that. 1 Corinthians 15.31. And it says, I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. Okay, we shall see that it relates to Paul's exposure of his physical life to hazard continually. 
It does not seem to refer to spiritual death at all. In 2 Corinthians 4.10, however, we read of always bearing about in the body the dying of Jesus. And this describes the crucified life when the Spirit of God brings us daily into deeper conformity to the death of the Lord, and which follows our apprehension of our death with Christ according to the Word of God. <clears throat> If we fall into sin after taking the place of death, what then? This is the most critical point of all. Above all things, we must be honest with God and call sin, sin. Never attempting to cover it over or to reconcile our failure with our past experience. 1 John 1, 9 is always needed and we, and as we confess any sin, we must simply retake our place crucified with Christ and asked to be drawn into closer fellowship with him and kept by the power of his life in us continually. What about growth? It is only as we apprehend our union with Christ in his death, according to Romans 6, 3 through 6. And let's go there, Romans 6, 3 through 6. Know ye not that so many of us, as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, for we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Okay. That there can be real growth in grace, for it is the divine life which is to grow as the earth life is continually reckoned crucified. Some notes of warning. One, let us be aware of testifying, I am dead, for it is drawing attention to ourselves and is I in a subtle form. We may speak of the Lord in all that he is, but it is for him to bear witness to what he has done for us. Let us welcome also every criticism, kind and unkind so that we may learn to know ourselves and seek deeper deliverance. By this means, the outward life will soon be brought into conformity to the inner life, and discrepancy between lip and life be avoided. Beware of dogmatizing over spiritual truths. Let God bear witness, and then we need never assert anything about ourselves, 1 Corinthians 8, 2 is always true. So let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 2. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. Okay. Number two, let us never seek experiences but leave ourselves in the hand of God for him to do as it pleases him, leading us in any path that he may choose. Number three, let us take care lest we get out of soul rest in seeking further blessing. God cannot work while we are anxious, even about our spiritual experience. Let us take him at his word and leave the fulfillment of it to him. Number four, let us never judge God's word by our experience, for the word of God is true, whatever our experience may be. Number five, we should not seek consciousness of death with Christ. The words are a contradiction in terms. If we had literally passed out of this world into the next, we would not feel dead. We would only be conscious of a new wonderful life. Our consciousness of death would be negative. The old bonds would be unable to fetter us. Six, we must be aware of having faith. We must beware of having faith in our reckoning rather than in the God 
who undertakes to make the reckoning true. Number seven, let us beware also of trying to grasp the truth of God, for this is usually mental effort and hinders the Holy Spirit from doing his work. Yield to the Holy Spirit, and he will make the truth grasp us. The Lord has never promised that we shall be able to look within and say to our own satisfaction that self is gone. While we really believe God's word that we have died with Christ and count upon Christ as the living one to manifest his life through us, others will see that it is true while we are occupied with Christ. Number nine, when the Holy Spirit has applied the death of Christ exper experientially, experimentally, no, experientially, and brought the soul into real emancipation, it remains to be a momentary attitude maintained by abiding in him. There need no effort to abide if we count upon the Holy Spirit to keep us abiding unconsciously. Number 10, when we step out upon God's word, we must take heed that we do not look within to see if the work is done and watch the operation of God. Colossians 2.12. Let's go to Colossians 2.12. Colossians 2.12, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. As we rest on his word, the work is being wrought in the depths of our being by the mighty inward operator. If we begin to question, have I died with Christ or have I not? He has to wait until he can get us to look away from ourselves and rest upon the word again. Number 11, let us be prepared that the adversary will dispute every inch of ground. The devil is not dead, for when we hide in Christ upon the cross, he seems more alive than ever. But let the living Christ who dwells within guard us from all his subtleties then it will be victory all the way, for he is a defeated foe. Number 12, remember it is vain to ask God to set us free from ourselves if we retain one single thing that ministers to the self-life. An honest desire is to let Christ entirely possess us and a practical committing to the cross of all that is revealed will bring full deliverance. Let us remember, too, that in God's dealing with us, he will allow a trial to remain until we cease to writhe under it. We may as well say, yes, Lord, at the first. Thirteen. Finally, the end of the Lord is life, life out of death. If we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, of his death we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Romans chapter 6, verse 5. Let us trust him to do his work while we yield to his dealings. Trust him implicitly and obey promptly. Praise God. And that, my friends, was chapter 1. Reading from the book, Dying to Live, God's Master Plan of Salvation by Jesse Pin Lewis. That one is definitely worth listening to over and over, I believe, to get it deep within our spirits, because I know that I need this myself. I need this. I need to learn to let go, let God deliver me from self, and I need to release everything, not holding anything back whatsoever. All right, brothers and sisters, keep your eyes on Jesus, your nose in the book, which is the word of God, and embed the word of God upon the tablets of your hearts, so you will not sin against God or be deceived. Come next time, brothers and sisters. Stay in Christ. Stay in Christ.